and welcome to Connectivity Conversations, a podcast by ATC Africa, where we discuss insights and innovations for building a more connected world. My name is Adironke Adibanjo. We're glad to have you on yet another episode. Today, we are talking about green powered telecommunications. But let me introduce my guest. We have a very special guest here at ATC Africa. It's Peter van der Westhuizen, and he is the chief technical officer here at ATC Africa overseeing all of our power, essentially, generation across the continent. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Adironki. Great to be here. Great to have you, and welcome back to Nigeria. Thank you so much. <laughs> we need to work on you trying Jollof, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Peter, let's jump right into it. So let's talk today about powering telecommunications and what we're doing as ATC, but also just the industry in general and far, as far as what's going on with the challenges and the opportunities. So let's start with what we're even powering, right? For those who are not too familiar with the background of telecoms and what's happening behind the scenes, can you just walk us through what exactly we're powering when we talk about powering a tower? Right. So approximately 10% of the energy we deliver on a telecommunications site relates to our own needs for lighting, cooling, and security systems, monetary systems of our equipment mm -hmm. on a telecommunications site. But about 90% of that energy uh, is required by our tenants to, pr to power their telecommunications equipment, mostly the radio equipment that communicates with our cell phones. Mm -hmm. So that's the major use of uh, energy on a telecommunications site. Interesting. So there's a lot of power being generated to keep those lights on, essentially. So, but if you've lived on the African continent for long enough, as you and I have, you know that there are power challenges, right? Whether it's the grids or just the power generation as a whole. So can you walk us through those challenges? Because obviously those challenges will be impacting how we're able to power, you know, our towers. So can you just tell us a little bit about what's going on there? So there's this largely three issues with, with African um, energy and, and particularly the national energy grids in, in Africa. The f and it's very similar for telecommunications as it is for our very own households. So I think we can all relate to the challenges we experience with the national energy grids at home. First of all, um, the national energy grids in Africa do not reach a, a large pop uh, percentage of the populations in, in Africa. So we see the same on our sites, uh, you know, that large percentages of our telecommunication sites do, are not connected to the national energy grid. Where those grid connections are present, we also see that they are not reliable enough. Mm. So the availability of energy in those grids are, can be as low as 10 hours a day. So leaving 14 hours with no power in those connections at all. And finally, um, in certain parts of Africa, the national energy grid generation techniques are not clean. They, they do emit large amounts of greenhouse gases, which leads to uh, global warming. Right. This is predominantly in West Africa, Southern Africa, where carbon-based fuels are, are used to generate uh, energy. Mm -hmm. uh, we see other parts of Africa, predominantly East Africa, where clean generation techniques are used, such as hydropower, solar power, and those grids are inherently very uh, clean in, uh, in emissions profiles. So now when you look mm -hmm. at um, all of that, right, we can talk about the environmental impact because as you've just mentioned, you know, there's a lot of GHD emissions going on in the industry. So can you touch a little bit on that? Like how, what is the environmental impact if you were to sum it up on the continent and how does that impact what we're doing uh, in the industry? So the, the, big, the big impact from our operations is predominantly on the sites that are not connected to the national energy grids, mm -hmm. where we have to generate energy um, through other means on a, on a fairly limited uh, plot of land. Mm -hmm. So historically, we've relied on diesel generators to generate that energy. And diesel generators emit very large amounts of, of greenhouse gases, which uh, leads to global warming, as I said before. Now, since the uh, Paris Climate Agreement of 2015, 175 countries have signed up to the commitment to limit the uh, uh, impact of greenhouse gas emissions on climate change. And science-based targets offers companies an opportunity to commit to those uh, targets, mm. which American Tower has done. Right. So American Tower has committed to reduce its greenhouse gas emissions by 40% from 2019 to 2035. We are part of that, so we are committed on this journey mm -hmm. uh, to re reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. And that is also in support 
to the telecommunications industry, which has collectively committed to a net zero target by 2050. Our Quite customers ambitious. have signed up to that, <laughs> the likes of Airtel, MTN, Vodafone, Orange. They're all on that journey and they require American Tower as one of the key suppliers in their value chain right. to support them in their journeys as well. So both American Tower has made a commitment uh, globally mm -hmm. and our customers require us to support their commitments mm -hmm. of net zero by 2050. Mm -hmm. So we are on this journey to uh, reduce our greenhouse gas emissions in Africa. Wow, that's an exciting journey. Quite ambitious, I would imagine. Um, and that's why we like to see ourselves as a strategic strategic partner, right? Trust a strategic partner because we're helping them meet their targets while we meet ours as well. I think it's important for people to know that a lot of our sites, or maybe a good number of our sites, are not within the urban spaces, right? Sometimes they're in the outskirts of cities where the grid might not, you know, um, reach. So, you know, let's talk a little bit about just that as, as a whole, how we are able to generate power on our sites, you know, where the grid isn't available, but also some of the innovative things that, you know, we've been doing over the years to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions, um, but also to ensure that our power is optimized. Can you take us through that just a little bit? So we've been on a journey for the last five years of how to reduce the amount of diesel that we consume in our diesel generators. Mm -hmm. It's the consumption of diesel that leads to greenhouse gas emissions right. and, and therefore global warming. So reducing the amount of diesel we consume on our sites has been the primary goal. Mm -hmm. um, sites are all, all over our geographies, for sure. Mm -hmm. So not always can we connect them to the grid, which is our primary to uh, uh, means of reducing uh, generator runtime. Mm -hmm. Where that is not possible, we've implemented, first of all, lithium-ion batteries to enable a technique called generator hybrid cycling. This means that the generator runtime is reduced by 50%. You can imagine what a big step that takes. Huge. And we have deployed lithium-ion batteries to 95% of American Tower sites today. It's been a massive investment. Yeah. So not only does it reduce generator runtime, but it also uh, provides a mean of storing energy from the grid. So if a site is connected to the grid, we can store energy in those batteries for when the grid goes down. Mm. And we can continue running off battery power for as long as there's charge in those batteries. Right. So grid connections, hybrid cycling. Then since 2018, we started deploying solar energy on mm. our sites, meaning that when the climate conditions are good, the sun is shining, there's no clouds, we are starting to generate energy on site without the diesel generator running whatsoever. Brilliant. So, so that has been the, the third step we've taken mm -hmm. to reduce generator runtime and, and diesel fuel consumption right. is to start generating solar energy on site. Today, we have 74% of American Tower sites in Africa have solar panels installed. That's amazing. So that has been a, a major investment, a major commitment to uh, reducing uh, diesel generation of energy. And we continue on that journey. Right. We continue to deploy more solar uh, powered sites. And uh, we launched in 2023, we launched a concept called the ATC Green Site. It's, uh, it's a site with much more solar energy panels than, than we've historically done. Okay. These sites have typically 40 to 80 solar panels. It's, it's like a solar roof, you can call it, on, on these sites. Mm -hmm. And they are meant to be able to run from solar energy for 99% of the time. So, so from a, a baseline site running a diesel generator 24 hours a day uh, down to 1%. Absolutely so, so, so that that is the latest <laughs> yeah. uh, commercial deployment we're doing. So that has been a big commitment. Absolutely. Um, and this is just, I mean, like you've talked about the, the targets that we're trying to meet. So these are some of the efforts that we're making towards, towards doing that. So, you know, when you look at the future of connectivity, you know, I mean, it's growing at a rapid rate. <laughs> you know, everybody's just trying to keep up with what's going on. When you talk about the introduction of 5G and all the other Gs that are on the way, you know, obviously power demands are going to increase. Um, what do you think about alternative, other alternative sources of energy? When you talk about gas generators and wind turbine and, you know, um, all the other, you know, renewable energy options, are we looking at any of those? And what, what are your, what's your take on how all of those are going to impact the industry as well? Yeah, I think the importance is, is, is clear when you understand what we think is going to happen with energy demand on, on, on our business. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 
greenhouse gas emissions target is an absolute reduction target. So even if we have increased demand, more sites, etc., mm -hmm. we still have to reduce. Despite all of that, we have to reduce our emissions by 40%. So that, that is, you know, in the, in the context of increased demand. Mm -hmm. When we look uh, five years ahead, we see that energy demand on our sites in total is going to quadruple over this period of time. Quadruple. So, so clearly, you know, in the context that we have to deliver four times more, but yet emit 40% uh, less, there is a, a, a lot of work to do. Yeah, absolutely. I'm happy to say since 2019, the baseline year, we have reduced our emissions every year so far. Um, we have a tough outlook for 24, but, you know, so far, every year we have reduced year over year. So mm -hmm. this is a 16-year journey of around 2.5% per year. Uh, to reach the 40% target over time. Now, we are going to run out of space on our sites, you know, considering they are, it's, it's a limited area yeah. that you can put solar panels on. So we do not think we can reach the whole 40% uh, reduction goal with solar only. Mm. We're going to have to take additional steps. And the, the big next big thing we're working on is uh, biofuels. So we think uh, biofuels has the uh, ability to power our sites to, to, to a much cleaner extent using fuels such as biomethanol, uh, hydro, hydrogen. And those are the uh, new technology uh, proof of concept uh, tests we're doing at present. Okay. So we have introduced uh, biomethanol in our diesel generators in Kenya. That reduces emissions 60% on a per kilowatt hour basis. So that's already in operation, mm -hmm. and Kenya is ramping up, and Uganda is doing the same. Brilliant. We have started fuel cell uh, trials. We have it running in South Africa right now, where biomethanol is a zero emissions uh, fuel. So we can, by using biomethanol, we can power our sites with zero emissions Brilliant. going forward. Mm. We're busy installing uh, a system in Kenya as well to see how, the, how it will operate in local conditions. Similarly, we're starting uh, right now uh, gas turbine trials in Nigeria. Right. So the first gas turbine is running. Uh, again, it offers uh, approximately a 15-16% uh, reduction in emissions on a per kilowatt hour basis. Mm. Um, the next uh, uh, technology we want to, to test is hydrogen-powered um, fuel cells. Uh, there is a number of automotive automotive uh, manufacturers that is pursuing the same, mm -hmm. you know, in the search of zero emissions transport, mm. and we think the same technology can be uh, used in telecommunication sites. So you and the team are busy. <laughs> you guys are busy. There's a lot going on. It's an exciting time, I think, and this is just how we're trying to combat the unique challenges on the African continent, right? Because obviously in other parts of the world, this might not be their experience, but we've really done a lot of work and made a lot of investments, as you've mentioned, to try to bring down those GHD emission numbers, but also ensure that there's power availability um, for our customers and making sure there's no downtime as much as possible. On that note, we're going to wrap it up. Thank you so much for joining us, Peter, on Connectivity Conversations. We look forward to having you back because there's so much more to talk about but in the meantime we'll park it right there and thank you for listening to connectivity conversations a podcast by atc africa join us on the next episode mm -hmm.